Hello, I'm Professor Steve Miller. Today we're going to look at GMesh, a computational grid generation package, and we'll look at it in the context of computational fluid dynamics. Today I want to show how to export a particular grid, and we'll also look at the format of the files generated by GMesh. We'll look at the output of one particular grid for the SU2 CFD solver. But remember, GMesh can output grids and boundary conditions for a number of CFT solvers, which are natively supported. We choose SU2 because it's open source and free, and a good example. Now, to illustrate this, I have created a simple domain, as you see in the middle of the screen. The blue lines are the outer part of the domain. The left boundary condition is an inlet. That is, I've only given it the name inlet. It's part of the name list of a CFD or boundary condition. Remember, you'll have to select the name list for the particular CFD solver that you're using. On the right part of the domain, I have an outlet. On the top, I have a wall. and the bottom, I have a wall. So the same boundary conditions are at the top and bottom. You can imagine this is one of the most simple flows that you can possibly create. I've created a very, very coarse grid for illustration purposes only. You can see it's made up and discretized by triangular elements which are shown by the green lines. Let's look at the statistics of this grid before we export it. Simply go to Tools, Statistics. Let's look at the geometry. You can see my whole geometry in my domain consists of four points, four curves, which are the lines, and one surface. I've also created a fluid domain in the surface. You can see there it is called fluid and it's a surface. Now we've already saved the .geo file and we've already saved the .mesh file which are created by GMesh in its native formats. We need to export our grid into say a CFD format like SU2. Let's do that now. Now that I've set my boundary conditions and created my grid and specified my fluid domain, I need to go to File export, and I'll have this wonderful list, and I can call it simple SU2, and now I'll say what kind of file I want to export. So I'll click and hold this button, and unfortunately it goes off my screen, but I'm going to scroll down and you'll see so many different options, including images and post-processing, including pair view files if you want to read these meshes with pair view, which is a visualization system. I'll check SU2. So you see SU2 appears in the drop down menu and I'll just type in .su2 to make sure I have the right file format. So in my directory here we're going to look at these files with the VI editor in a minute just to see what their format is for this particular grid and boundary condition. And we'll also look at this particular SU2 file. Save. And now if I didn't define a fluid domain volume or surface in 2D in this case I would keep this checked. Now, since I did save the fluid volume, I would uncheck it. I, I specify that fluid volume as you saw when I was highlighting the background grid. So I want to keep that unchecked. Usually you always want to define uh, with grid generation tools, if you can, what the fluid volume or domain is. Remember, when you're working with complicated geometries, there could be solid parts in your geometry and you wouldn't want to export those to your grid files for CFD. Anyway, let's hit OK and it looks like our operation was successful. Now let's go look at the files. All right, on Mac OS X, I've opened up my terminal and I went to the directory where the files are stored. You can look at this in Finder on Mac OS X or in Windows. You can use your favorite text editor. Don't use Word or Word processor. Text editor is important. I like to use the built one VI. Let's list our directory. I'll type ls space ls l s a h. So list my files in human readable format. You'll see in the directory I have three files. The first is simple underscore su2.geo, the second is simple underscore su2.mesh, and the third is simple underscore su2.su2. This is the su2 input file that contains the grid and boundary condition information with the name list. The first file, the .geo file, is of course the script command developed and created by GMesh through our approach 
And the second file is the mesh file created by, of course, Gmesh. Let's look at the first file. I'll type vi and simple se2.go. Now enter, and you'll see that I have the script file created by or Gmesh. Let's read it. The double slashes are comments. Each particular line without a double slash is a particular command. For example, the first line says it's using the open cascade cat engine. And then the next four commands are adding points at, say, the origin with the grid factor 1.0. And I add points 2 through 5. And then I added points, well, line 1, line 2, line 3, 4, to connect the points. For example, line 1 connects points number 2 to 3, which are shown here and here. Notice I don't have a point 1 because I created it and deleted it. Next, it creates a loop, which I did in the GUI, and I wrote to the script file, connecting nodes 1, 4, and then negative 2 to negative 3 in those particular opposite directions on the particular lines, 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, I created a plane surface on, of course, the curve loop 1 and its surface number 1. Then, on each of these particular curves, plane curve 3, 4, 1, and 2, I've set the inlet, the outlet, the wall, and the wall on the upper and lower surfaces respectively. Finally, I created the physical surface fluid. It's that simple. Let's exit this file by pressing colon WQ. Excuse me, that saves an exit. Let's do backspace, backspace, Q, exclamation. So I type colon, Q, exclamation, enter. I'm back at my interface. Let's look at the actual mess file exported by Gmesh in SE2 format. This is very understandable. SE2, so I type vi, simple SE2.SE2. Enter. And now let's dissect the SU2 file. The first line is the number of dimensions. It's two. The second line says the number of elements in the file. It's an unstructured grid. There's 22 elements which make up the grid. Each line is a particular element labeled from 0 to 21, as you see right here. Now the first column represents the element type. It's a triangle. The second, third, and fourth columns represent the nodes, and so each row is one particular connectivity definition from element 0 through 21 for triangles. Next, there's 18 grid points in my mesh. These are listed from, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc., all the way up to 17. 0 is the first grid point, 17 is the last. The first two columns are the x and y z x and y coordinate of each node. You can see that well, some of these are just integer values because my mesh range is from 0 to 2 and 0 to 1 in the x and y directions respectively. Then I have a number of these um, floating point values which are rather long. But anyway these are created by of course Gmesh and written to file for SU2. The next line represents the number of boundary condition name lists in the file. It's 3 right there. And then there's three following tags. The first one is inlet, the second is outlet, and the third is wall. For each one of these tags it says the number of elements. In this case there's two elements on the inlet. This is a 2D domain so they're lines. Each of these has a line flag which is three. So you can see for all these they're lines because we're in a 2D domain. If we're in a three-dimensional domain of course they'd be surfaces. The second and third column for each of these, if there's two elements on the inlet face, would be 0 and 10, and 10 and 3. So this is a connectivity in itself. Now if you go up, you can look at nodes 0 and 10, and 10 and 3. They're located here. Here's node 0 at coordinate 0, 0, and node 10 at coordinate 0 0.5. So the first inlet element line goes from 0, 0, to 0 0.5. The second one, a line 3, goes from element 10, excuse me, node 10 to node 3. Let's look that up too. Here's node 10 at 0 0.5, and of course here's grid point 3 from coordinate 0, 1, x and y. So the second inlet face 
our line in 2D goes from 0 0.5 to 101 in XY coordinates. The file then ends. There's nothing else to be said. You can see this is a wonderful format for unstructured grids because it concisely states the connectivity, the dimensions of the grid, the nodes and their coordinates, and then the boundary conditions. In the SU2 CFD solver, or any other CFD solver that reads these types of formats, they will have to recognize the tag inlet, and the user will have to tell the CFD solver what inlet means. We would have to associate with, say, perhaps a remain invariant boundary condition, um, a total pressure, inlet condition, etc., and also for the other boundary conditions. And that's it. We've created our first, of course, exported, unstructured CFD grid and boundary condition file for a solver. You can try other exports and look at the file structures yourself if you're curious on how they change and how they might differ. Thanks a lot for your time today. I'm Professor Steve Miller.